my goodness. Oh, we're back. We're live. Here we are. It's Wednesday. I'm here with Carol Mun Lee. Carol Mun Lee, uh, you should know, is our vice president at uh, Think Tech Hawaii. We work closely. And she's also the chief operating officer, and we work closely in that. In fact, sometimes we can't even tell the difference when she's vice president and when she's chief operating officer. But the thing about Carol Mun Lee is she's a successful academic, acad academician. She was the uh, what, uh, associate dean of the William S. Richardson School of Law for quite some time. Uh, and uh, she was a, a, a trust officer, right. a, a trust entrepreneur, uh -huh. um, a corporate officer, entrepreneur person uh, who spent oh, a career in, right. in building trust mm -hmm. companies on Bishop Street. So few people know as much about the business on Bishop Street as Carol Munley. And with Carol Munley is Minky Munley, who is our, our team uh, uh, mascot. Can we get a shot of her? She's just off camera, and I think it'd be worthwhile just to have a little. There she is. She's just checking, checking us out. Hello, Minky baby. <laughs> <clears throat> and this reminds me that on December 11th, you know, we're having our, uh, our Think Tech reunited, Think Tech United, and our Think Tech United is going to have some some awards. You know, go to the host and guests we like best. And they're going to be called the Minky Awards. Right. Quite a few of them. If you want to sign up, you know, and come down, this will be really interesting because there's a lot of people who have been hosts and guests and speakers and moderators over the 15 years of ThinkTech. Um, it's a reunion, yeah? Uh, look at thinktechhawaii.com. There's a place you can sign up there. Okay. Back Hi, to Jay. serious. <laughs> so, Carol. You just came back from a trip. I did. I just came back from Denver, and actually, I wasn't even supposed to arrive until this afternoon. But because it started snowing, I changed my flights, and I got in midnight last night. So here I am. So we hijacked you onto Life in the Law, Life in the Law program yes, today. Yes, yeah. And uh, so we want to talk about your trip. Right. We want to talk about exactly, you know, uh, what this uh, W I C H E is commission is. Right. And that stands for Western Interstate Commission, Commission for, for Higher, Higher Education. Education. So right. this, this sounds like a pretty heavy, serious program. Right. In Denver it was, yeah? Yes. Okay. Denver is actually the headquarters of WICHE. WICHE is a um, Western region organization with 15 states and one territory. The Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands is our newest member. Mm -hmm. And Hawaii has been a member since 1959. And, um, How about you? How long have you been? I've been. I was appointed by Governor Abercrombie about two years ago. Oh, okay. There are three Hawaii commissioners: myself, um, Francisco Hernandez, who's the vice chancellor of students at UH Manoa, mm -hmm. and Stephen Wilwright, who is the president of BYU. Mm -hmm. oh, and major. Uh, so, right. So the three of us meet uh, with the entire commission uh, twice a year, uh, usually on the mainland. It did meet once in Hawaii about two years ago. Oh. And uh, it's very active in um, promoting access to higher education for our students, uh, primarily in the West. But we also are very involved in a lot of policy initiatives. And it's been an extremely beneficial program for Hawaii in terms of saving our residents' money for education purposes. Okay, so is, it sounds like it's quasi-governmental, am I right? Well, it's not qu the uh, organization itself composed of these 16 states. We actually do consider ourselves of the state of Hawaii. We are actually in the Constitution. We've been uh, authorized by um, uh, legislation that means that we are not technically a vendor, or uh, oh. our relationship is much more of the state. Okay. And, that um, makes you a quasi government. I mean, yeah, we're recognized yeah. by the government. Recognized Absolutely, by the, yeah. recognized by the government. Yeah. And we benefit our residents because we are able to provide our residents opportunities to travel, to study in other states and other um, of our member states at universities, state universities there, and uh, pay. Why don't you pick up Minky? Yeah, come Minky. We, and know, pay. She's a, a, d a devoted part of our audience anyway. We yes, might as everybody. Well. I'm going to put her in my lap. Okay, all right. And pay tuition that is reduced. So, for instance, if a Hawaii family wants to send their child or the child is interested in studying on the mainland, but because of the prohibitive out-of-state out of cost for 
uh, a Hawaii person to attend, let's say, the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Um, under one of the many three programs at which he runs, uh, which is called WUE, W-U-E. Yes, some terrific acronyms yeah, here. Western Undergraduate Education. Um, a student can attend UNLV, but only pay 100% plus, uh, state tuition plus 50%. So they're basically saving a lot of money. And every year we send about uh, over 1,000 students to, undergraduate students to one of our uh, member states. So it's, it's kind of a mutual scholarship, Absolutely. kind of a reduced tuition. Right, it's a reciprocity agreement and in vice versa. So this year, for instance, we sent over 1,200 students, 2013, 2014. And they saved a total of over, I don't know, something, several millions of dollars. Over the years, our students have saved over $175 million by savings in tuition. But in return, we also bring students from other states who want to come to Hawaii to study. And again, instead of them paying out-of-state Hawaii tuition, they get to pay state tuition plus 50%. So that's the undergraduate program. Uh, just, a, just a thought, though. Mm -hmm. is it doesn't, I mean, of course, collaboration is good. Exchange is good. You know, bringing distant parts together, mm -hmm. having them learn from each other is always good. But <clears throat> aren't you taking students out of UH who needs the money? Students out of UH who need the money. But we're giving them the opportunity to travel, to live in uh, other communities, to be exposed to other cultures, other educational. Um, so there's a real benefit there. Absolutely. And you're, and you're cross-pollinating by having students from other places, come to same Hawaii. bunch of states, come to Hawaii right. and study at UH, among others, I right. suppose. But, but I also want to talk about the two other programs that are really very important. And one of them is called the PSEP, which is professional. I'm sorry, I have to look at this. Um, it's a professional school exchange program. And what that does is, for instance, in Hawaii, we don't have, and we don't plan to have, because we're such a small state, uh, resources to open our own school of dentistry, occupational therapy, physical therapy, veterinarian medicine. Um, and so what we can do through this particular exchange program, and which has benefited many students in Hawaii over the years, is we can send them to states that do have these programs, and they pay in-state tuition. So they are able Only to... Only because of the... This pro exactly, this reciprocal exchange program. Well, that's great. It's a wonderful benefit. That's great. It's a wonderful benefit. Uh, not a lot of people know about it. We think guidance counselors at schools, uh, families should know about it. And over the years, we have had many students benefit from it, but we could always use more. So I could go to a very good dental school. Absolutely. In a western state, all the western states yes. are the ones we think yes. of. If so you're accepted, yeah. yes, <coughs> then the tuition, the bite for you on yeah, tuition will be saved, uh, be, be a tremendous savings. Usually bite. that's a, that's a the, substantial reduction. Yes, exactly. It is here and it would be there too. Right. And we also have a similar program for um, graduate programs. So graduate programs, professional programs, and undergraduate programs. Now is there, you know, some of these programs where mm -hmm. you get tuition assistance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on the mainland mm -hmm. from, you know, or by virtue of a local organizations, they got some kind of commitment to come back. Is there yes. anything like that? Uh, it's more informal than that. But yes, we, we ask that they do plan to come back and practice here, but um, it's not... You can't force them. Yeah, we can't force uh, them. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. be able to do that. Yeah. Most people understand that that's ba basically the obligation to come back and practice for a while, but we don't have it um, a written yeah. I met contract. a dentist recently who, um, he was a graduate of Kamehameha mm -hmm. schools, and he, he took off to the mainland to learn dentistry, mm -hmm. which I think is too bad we don't have a dental school, but mm -hmm. this, this works instead. This yes, thing. absolutely. It's it, a great it gives you the same benefit. Yeah. Anyway, they paid his tuition, mm -hmm. and they said to him, when you come back, you, mm -hmm. you have to do payback. Uh -huh. uh, not only do you have to come back, but you have to do service on the neighbor islands uh -huh. where they right. need dentists. Mm -hmm. And he did, mm -hmm. and uh, it was very nice to see that. Mm -hmm. It was part of the deal. Mm -hmm. And it was a period, I forget how many years, but mm -hmm. it was a period he was obligated mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's too bad that we don't offer a state uh, a market environment that will draw people back, whether there's any commitment or not. Yeah. 
but hey, the, the, at the end of the day, we want them back. <laughs> yeah, and eventually a lot of people do come back for family reasons and, and yeah. uh, other reasons. So, um, are, okay, so any other incentive programs? Um, well, more importantly than incentive programs, which he is very involved in a lot of policy initiatives. Mm. And um, Hawaii gets the benefit of that. We're either involved on the ground level in terms of participating in uh, program initiatives, or we get the benefit of the result of it. Uh, several things we've been working on. One is called WCET, which is technology related. I, I guess, I get a blackboard I, and here. I can't remember okay, what right, it stands for. And There's going to be I an exam you. after this yeah. is over, and boy, you're going to have trouble with it. Okay, WCET stands for WICHE Cooperative for Educational Technologies, that accelerates adoption of effective use of technology in teaching and learning. That's right up our alley. Absolutely, yeah. and actually, uh, Hayak Okimoto from UH has been the chair of the um, national, or, or of the that. WC, yes, yeah. exactly. But one of the very active members has been, in the past, David Lassner, who is currently, of course, UH president. So he has a very close relationship and understanding of which he and uh, its goals and uh, its benefits to the state of Hawaii. Mm, okay. We also have a close relationship with UH, University of Hawaii, of course. How about the other schools? Can you say you have equally close relationships with um, HPU, Chaminade? BYU. BYU. Yeah, well, one of our commissioners is Stephen Wheelwright, oh, who's sure, the president sure. of BYU. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And he was there, so you know him well now. I know him well. <laughs> Wonderful person. So, Going back to um, you know the, the the conference rather, mm -hmm. go your commissioner, mm -hmm. which entitles you to vote on some things that uh, mm -hmm. I couldn't vote on if I went there. I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. And 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 by virtue of the fact that it's a conference, mm -hmm. um, you know you have a certain protocol about how a conference runs. And, yeah. And so when we come back from this break, Carol, okay. I'm going to ask you how life was in the course of this conference. Was it two days? A day and a half. A day and a half. And uh, we'll find out what it's like to be a commissioner okay. at Ritchie and, uh, you know, the, the whole social and intellectual experience you had. Ooh, right. It's a hard question. Okay. And we'll be right back. That's Carol Mon Lee. Uh, she's our vice president and COO. Uh, we're substituting for life in the law today with a special report from the Ritchie Commission. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage here on the Think Tech Digital Series. The show is every Wednesday from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, and I want you to watch this show because I think that when we talk with artists on the show about what they do, how they do it, and most importantly, why they do it, I believe that it resonates within each of us and we find something inside of ourselves that brings us closer to all of humanity. That's what arts are there to do, and that's what I'm here to do on this show. That's Center Stage. It's on every Wednesday from 2 to 3 o'clock. I hope to see you there. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here with Carol Monley, our Vice President of Think Tech, a very important person, probably the most important person, uh, I'm telling you. No. And the COO that is the Chief Operating Officer of Think Tech, who helps us on everything. And uh, we're talking about a report from the Witchy Commission. And the uh, fact is that Carol Monley is a, a Witchy Commissioner, and that's the Western Interstate Commission, Commission for, for Higher, higher education, education, which is no small matter. You know, there's, there's um, you, you know, if we hang together and do things together and collaborate among many states, mm -hmm. we can have huge benefits, and that's what it is in education. It's very important to yeah. collaborate. Bring, bring things together. Mm -hmm. So I asked you before, I mentioned I was going to ask you, for how, how life was in this, in this conference. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds like, you know, there's going to be a lot of professional mm -hmm. interchange. Mm -hmm. It sounds like there's going to be some discussions and some votes mm -hmm. and some things, that, you know, teaching you about what's, mm -hmm. what's going on. So mm -hmm. give us a, a thumbnail of how it went. Um, well, of course, as with um, any meeting like this where you have members from all over the country, in this case 15 states and CNMI, uh, you get the opportunity to meet with other colleagues who have similar but um, different spins on different issues, different stages of development, and actually new issues that we're perhaps not facing. 
And it's a wonderful, um, for me, it's a great opportunity because, of course, here in Hawaii, we don't get the opportunity to meet with people regularly outside of traveling to the mm -hmm. mainland. Yeah. Um, so uh, among the, the um, matters that we discussed was the Reauthorization Act uh, in Washington. Which is? Uh, the uh, higher, no, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to give you the complete It's okay, title. it's just the idea. Yeah, right, and which is position on reauthorization for uh, what we will propose to represent the organization in Washington, D.C. Okay. So we're always dealing with national issues, um, regional issues, and of course local issues. We've been very lucky working with David Longenecker, who's the current president of, and longtime president of WICHI. And uh, he was just here in Hawaii about two weeks ago. So he met with me and the other commissioners, and we also met with President Lassner, um, and also Senator Brian Taniguchi, who chairs higher education in the Senate, and Representative Isaac Choi, who chairs uh, education in the House, to deal with issues relating to which he, that can help promote education in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly dealing with local issues, uh, regional issues, and again, national issues. One of the big matters that we voted on was something that's called, and again, I'm going to look at my crib sheet, how, what the acronym stands for. I feel for. an acronym coming an on. An acronym yeah. is coming on. SARA. <laughs> Can you <Okay>. guess? <laughs> All right. State is that with an H? No, H. <laughs> okay. <laughs> State Authorization Reciprocity Agreement. State Authorization Reciprocity Agreement and that's regarding distant education courses. So when you think about education in the broader concept, it's not just attending college for four years in graduate school. There's all sorts of now per permutations, whether it's online education, distance learning, um, and which has been yeah. very involved in distance learning and how states deal with students who live in one part of the state and need to get educated from uh, a school that might be located in another part of the state, how you get credit, how you transfer credit, how you develop a curriculum, how you measure, how you assess, uh, how you ensure that they stay in and graduate. So there's so many issues related to that. Um, each state has to agree to participate. And Hawaii is one state has, that has not yet agreed to do well, that. Why not? Well, we're working on it. And we hope that by May, um, Hawaii will have agreed. Who and has we're working to agree? With a, well, working with our state legislators okay. And, okay. And, um, and the governor and uh, governor's office. So uh, the other thing that we talked about, which was interesting, was how the recent elections in every state affected education. And of course, you know, when I reported on Hawaii with our new governor, uh, Ige, we're not sure uh, his appointments in terms of cabinet appointments and how that will affect. But we do know statewide we have the support of Senator Taniguchi, and assuming Representative Choi continues to chair the education in the House, that uh, they all know Wichi and the benefits to the state so that we will continue to get their support. Well, David Ige comes from education. His wife uh, is deeply right. involved in DOE, mm -hmm. and I think he was a teacher, yeah. and he's very close with the teacher's union, which is a right. good thing. Yes. Um, and he cares. I mean, it was a big point of his uh, platform. Yeah. So I think you probably will find a lot of empathy with him. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. So th does, um, does this include graduate schools? Because you yes. come at it from... Mm -hmm. The gradual point. I mean, you you got into me right about this. You you got interested in education um, from the graduate school point of view. That that well, no no, it's more. <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. Well, I grew up. I graduated from college in the late '60s, and um, and went to graduate school at Columbia. And I thought I was going to become a teacher, which was the you know profession for young women in those days. Um, but because of the, at that time, I guess they called it the baby bus, there were very, there were fewer Just students, <laughs> baby <laughs> bus, <laughs> there were fewer students entering grade schools, and there were baby boomers like myself now who were in the workforce as teachers. So there were really too many teachers uh, and not enough students in the grade school level. So I couldn't find a teaching job, and this was in the early 70s. This is East Coast. 
Uh, this was actually, I was in the West Coast by that okay. time. Okay. And uh, just as a lark, I applied to one law school, and I decided if I don't find a teaching job, I'll go to law school. So I ended up going to UC Hastings. <laughs> Second best. <laughs> yeah. Postponed a decision about career for a few more years. And then when I graduated, um, I practiced law for a couple of years in L.A., and then moved to Hawaii, and I decided to get back into education. So it's when I went to UH Law School as a professor teaching for two years there. So it was sort of, I did try to teach at the kindergarten, preschool, grade school level, but I couldn't get a job. So I ended up teaching at UH Law School for a few years. And that took you to the associate dean job. Eventually, right. Detour through downtown for many years. Oh, that's as, right. As a, so it started at, at uh, uh, the law school. Yes, and then, and then I went downtown and worked for Bob Mitkiff at American Trust and Bishop Trust Company. Who recently died. Bob recently passed away, and if I could just say something sure, about Bob please, Mitkiff. Please do. Um, there was a wonderful obituary about him in the paper and how much he contributed to our community, and, um, and he did. And so many, whether it's the uh, Capital District or downtown or even the Waikiki Improvement Association, he was so involved. But as an employer, he was wonderful. He was so supportive of women in the workforce. And I have to say that so much of what I know about uh, corporate organization, corporate work, was through his mentoring and his willingness to give women, not just myself, but um, young women uh, opportunities and the trust to basically learn as we went along and guide us. And he was a wonderful, wonderful boss. So I miss him. A word for Bob Midkiff. I met him when you guys, when American Trust was uh, there in, on the 12th floor. And that's where we met. Yeah, that's where we met. In the and late 1970s. Was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was a long time ago, and he was such a sweet guy. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it was, he was so friendly, and he, he, you know, he had a lot of regard for lawyers. He did. Well, mm -hmm. Some some business people don't, mm -hmm. but he mm -hmm. did, and mm -hmm. he cared. He cared about them. Mm -hmm. He understood them, mm -hmm. which is very important. Mm -hmm. And he was kind to them, right. which not everybody is. Right. His daughter Mary graduated from UH Law School. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bob Mitkiff. Anyway, uh, so um, there you there you you have all this experience in education. Mm -hmm. so it sounds like a lifelong, mm -hmm. in and out, back mm -hmm. and forth, and it's mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. a thread. Mm -hmm. And now you get on the commission. Was it was it at your request at Abercrombie Court? No, you know? not at all. He um, came to you. He came to me. Yeah, I. I have had, in addition to teaching experience, I've also been on the policy level. I was on the Board of uh, Trustees at St. Andrew's Priory, but I also was elected to the Board of Education in, 19, in 2008. Um, and it was kind of a, an interesting situation because I was on the board when the Constitution was amended to change the board from an appointed, from an elected board. Oh, that sorry, was a big change. Right, to an appointed board by Governor Abercrombie, and as a result, all of us sitting Board of Education members were discharged. <laughs> Thank you. Dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was discharged. So actually... Do you agree with that as a matter of policy? Sure. Yeah. I, Be better yeah. to have them appointed. I believe in the majority votes, and if that's what the majority wanted, I would go along with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But the inside scoop really is that actually I was then encouraged by... Um, uh, a dear friend uh, to apply to the Board of Regents, to the UH Board of Regents, based on my background and interest in policy, uh, in addition to hands on and to education. And so I did apply, and I actually made the short list, uh, which through was, the commission. Uh, yes, a, exactly through their advisory committee. Right, thing, exactly. Yeah. So I was one of twelve names sent up to the governor. Congratulations. Um, Except he didn't choose me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that was fine. But as a result, about a week later, I got a call if I wanted to be on the Witchy Commission. Uh, I so see. I see I it see. as kind of a consolation. Sure, sure. But actually, I'm very happy to be on the Witchy Commission. I find it very satisfying and the opportunity to actually do a lot of uh, good for the state of our uh, how, how long is the appointment? Three or four years. I knew you'd ask me that. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I withdraw the question. Yeah, three or four years. <laughs> Sounds just about right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the thing is, when you get, when you go to a meeting like that, mm -hmm. when you are surrounded with people and you have conversations that are all sort of focused with mm -hmm. the, the focal issues of the meeting, mm -hmm. you learn a lot. Mm -hmm. You really 
you know, envelop yourself in that. And mm -hmm. when you come back, you're you're a notable expert, mm -hmm. at least at what they were talking about. And um, does it does it fl other things flow from this? Uh, I mean, you know, you're a commissioner. Mm -hmm. What does it mean outside the commission? Well, I think it's an awareness. I feel partly an obligation to make sure that the people of Hawaii um, know about Wichi and the opportunities that it presents for our students. And so thank you for the opportunity to be here today oh. and, and talk about it. Um, we have a, a, a wonderful set of commissioners who are represented, as I said, by BYU and the University of Hawaii. Uh, we have a staff person, Russell Chan, and um, we have the opportunity, though, to let people know that if you or someone you know wants to pursue education beyond UH, whether it's for graduate school, professional school, or undergraduate, there are opportunities that will enable you to go to the mainland without costing um, so much money that would prohibit. So how does uh, somebody get in touch with uh, Wichi? and, you know, avail himself sure. or herself of these uh, entitlements? Sure. The easiest thing I would say would be just to go online, www.wichi.edu. And that's Let spelled W-I-C-H-E. Yep, www.wichi.edu. And then link to the Hawaii page, and there will be contact information, there will be background information, there will be lists of schools, there will be um, all sorts of information and details that could help a family decide if that's the best choice for you. I'm just wondering, do you think in the future, which we, which he will be beyond the states it is now, that will be, you know, countries in the Pacific Rim region, uh, you know, who operate on the same mm -hmm. idea? Wouldn't mm -hmm. that be something? Yeah. You know? Well, our newest member is the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, yeah. and so we do hope to get other territories. Um, there are equivalent organizations, one for the Midwest, one for the South, and one for the North, for Northeast, uh, New England, New York. And so the f these four organizations do get together on several of these policy initiatives. Wichi, though, is extremely um, powerful, important. We have 15 states, but including large states like California. Sure. And um, so we've been very uh, much a leader in a lot of these. <coughs> so it strikes me that, mm -hmm. you know, th this is a nice sort of compact of collaboration, but mm -hmm. what about Indiana. Mm -hmm. you know, do I, as a member, as a, as a student mm -hmm. uh, in, in the state of Hawaii, which is a member state in Wichi, mm -hmm. do I have any derivative collaborative benefits, entitlements in the state of Indiana? In other words, do right. all these, all these Wichis around the yeah, country, right. do they collaborate? As far as I know, the exchange doesn't extend to other states outside of our 15 states in the Commonwealth. Sorry, but maybe that's Maybe that's future. coming, who knows? Yeah, right. I know it's coming, though. A break is coming. <laughs> that's Carol Mun Lee. She's uh, an attorney, a, a trust executive, vice president and COO of uh, Think Tech, and a very important person. And um, she has come back from uh, the Witchy Commission, to which she was appointed a couple of years ago with a report about what's going on. And uh, we're, we're going to come back after this short break, and we're going to broaden the conversation. We're going to talk about higher education in the state of Hawaii. Whoa. And we're going to schmooze about that. You'll find out stuff you never knew. I'll be right back. Aloha. This is uh, Martin Despang, uh, host, co-host of the Urban Transcendence Show by Aleandra Yamashita and Martin Despang. And me being an architect and an educator in architecture, I'm really interested in that we make our uh, urban environment here in downtown Honolulu and Honolulu as exciting and invigorating and challenging be beautiful as our wonderful paradise natural environment. I'm going to bring in guests. We're going to bring in guests from a diversity of areas that help us to learn how we can achieve that goal that um, shouldn't be that hard to reach. So we look very much forward to see you then. Thank you. Okay, we're, we're back. We're live. We're here with Carol Mon Lee, who is an attorney, a, a trust executive of, of significant success, a, a, a vice president and COO of uh, Think Tech, and we've been describing her, you know, her career, her connection with education, and all the things she, she's done. And I'm left with one 
major thought, and that is, you know, all these things, Carol, they, they all were kind of on the road to think tech, and they, they prepared you exactly. for what, what you're doing today with think tech. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is the culmination of my career. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dave, for giving me this opportunity. So let's talk about, you know, <clears throat> education. Let's talk about okay. law school. Let's mm -hmm. talk about where it fits. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I went to a retreat over the weekend, which mm -hmm. I'll tell you about offline, and, uh, you know, we, we talked a lot about education because mm -hmm. there were a lot of educators there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's changing. Mm -hmm. uh, education is changing. The relationship of the schools to the community to the students and industry, it's all mm -hmm. changing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me, and and so uh, let's let's deal with just the law schools and see how they're changing. Yeah, uh, you know, you have kind of, you sit on the board of Hastings. Yes, I'm a member of the board of governors of UC Hastings. Uh, graduated from Hastings Law School okay, in 1974. That's, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, so you have a view of it from both here and California, right? Mm -hmm. and both the uh, University of Hawaii, mm -hmm. which is a, I would say a state school, it is, and uh -huh. Hastings, which I would say is a national law school, meaning it deals in uh, larger, you know, legal issues. Right. Reputation-wise, it likes to think that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, you know, they say that the lawyers on Wall Street, you know, day one out of law, out of mm -hmm. law school make 170, 175 thousand dollars without ever having practiced right. one day in their lives. Right. Um, and the other, on the other hand, in a lot of places, you can't get a job. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and the profession is like, you know, it's, it's in change now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember years ago when uh, and we covered this. Uh, oh, Carol organizes our 3D program, which you can see every two weeks on, on Tuesdays, right. which is really amazing because it has all these lawyers who practiced back in the 60s and 70s telling you their sea stories. But... Um, you know, uh, I, I remember uh, in, you know, the early days of the practice, it was entirely different. This was a, a community which was legally self-contained. Mm -hmm. And all the, the, all the legal issues that came up could be handled by the local bar, right. such as it was. But now, if you have a big real estate deal, the, the company involved, even a local company, will hire counsel from outside. Mm -hmm. Even the university uses patent counsel mm -hmm. on the mainland. Mm -hmm. I mean, the... It, the national swirl, mm -hmm. it's, it's all together now, and, you know, that changes the way law school works, doesn't right. it? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, law, law education has definitely changed over the years, and whether it's the influence and the growth of clinical education, more hands-on education, where it used to be three years of academic learning was out inside the classroom, you really very seldom got outside the classroom. And now the realization is, and it's been for many years now, that you need to get outside the classroom. You need to get that practical education. You need to get hands-on um, client contact. You need really? To get, As oh, a law student? Sure, absolutely. The law school here, UH Law School, has many clinics. Um, so you, you sort of represent, and it's not full representation, but you yeah, make like Yeah, under supervision, you're sure. Yeah. There's okay. a public defender's clinic. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. They represent clients. Um, so that's definitely been a strong uh, change from when law schools first started decades and decades ago. And in addition, of course, the, probably even the bigger change is technology and how that's affected, of course, not just law, but business and education and um, everything, government. So When you say technology, you mean the technology of the law office or do you mean the technology of our society? Well, basically, <laughs> you can't separate one from the oh, other. Can't. No, and certainly in terms of law offices, research, of course, online research, and 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 actually, I mean, the use of smartphones, the use of computers in classrooms. When I was in law school, you hand wrote an exam on a blue book. Um, nowadays, people use their laptops. Laptops, for sure. And. Uh, Everything is online, so it's a completely different-looking universe. So when we build classrooms now, you want to make sure they have plugs at every desk to make sure that they can recharge their batteries. Short story. I, you know, I took the bar exam in Hawaii in 1968, uh -huh. and um, I, I had uh, an IBM Selectric typewriter. I was mm -hmm. in the service, mm -hmm. and they issued me an IBM Selectric typewriter. It's a brand new, this was a brand new piece of gear, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. came out. Mm -hmm. So I said, why don't I, and I could type mm -hmm, fast, mm -hmm. why, why don't I take that down and 
use that to take the bar exam. So I called Eddie Suzuki, who was the mm -hmm. clerk of Chief. the court yeah, right. at the time. I said, can I bring this down? He said, sure, no problem. Bring it down. And uh, you can take the exam on the typewriter. That gives you a benefit. Fine. Uh -huh. So I did. I brought it down. And they said, uh, Jay, you'll, you'll have to go into that room if you want to take the exam because the typewriter might, you know, aggravate people. Right. The noise, because yeah. it was noisy, the right. IBM. So I went into that room, and in that room there were 20 people, <laughs> all with IBM symmetry. <laughs> <laughs> I had no advantage at all. No advantage, right. <laughs> they, were, they were all doing it. Right. I remember that very well. And by the way, it was very noisy. <laughs> very noisy. But you always had your pencil in case the Just in type case. read it. Right, yeah. exactly. Things have changed so much, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. in, 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 the, in, the, in legal technology mm -hmm. for a moment. And mm -hmm. I remember uh, the, uh, the stunning, uh, and I'm sure this has an effect on, on legal education, the stunning blow it was to find one of our big clients on Bishop Street, the uh, owner of one of the big office mm -hmm. buildings there, said, Jay, would, would you mind sending me the file of our lease, the, the computer file? Uh -huh. Because from now on, We'll do our own lease writing. Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> because before, you guys had the computers. Right. And we didn't. Right. Now we, we bought a computer. Yeah. So we'll take care of that. Yeah, right, right. And I realized that a part of our practice was going away. At the moment in time, mm -hmm. part of our practice was going away. It was going to change. Sure. And it certainly has changed. And so certainly has changed. Well, as you know, just as you're saying that, um, it used to be one-on-one, -on -one, a secretary and a lawyer. And now you know that people do their own writing, their own keying in. The, the, the need for an individual one-on-one -on -one secretary doesn't exist. And uh, it's not cost-effective. It's not uh, efficient. And uh, so that means the redesign of law firms, efficient law firms, are not designed around the same cubicle and office that used to be the standard in, in, in large law firms. Yeah, and the, the redesign of their edu of the education of a young lawyer. Absolutely, yeah. You know, when, uh, when I went to law school, it was the uh, 60s, um, people weren't interested in the environment at all. Mm -hmm. They weren't interested in social policy very much either, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. They were interested in getting down to Wall Street mm -hmm. and making money. Mm -hmm. And it's gone up and down, mm -hmm. those issues, mm -hmm. over the years. But now I think, if you look at, uh, at uh, William S. Richardson School of Law, you'll see a lot of social policy and a lot of environment, and it's kind of a mirror image, a, re a reflection of society in general, of our special society. Mm -hmm. But it's it's uh, it's it's very clear and yeah. it's uh, undeniable right. that things have dramatically changed. Right. And I would say that it's probably, if, my gut, I like your opinion mm -hmm. on this, mm -hmm. since the Constitutional Convention mm -hmm. of, of 1978, mm -hmm. there have been dramatic changes, mm -hmm. and Sherry Broder has been mm -hmm. involved. And right. <laughs> John Mayne she and I were, you know. were on the staff, staff attorneys at the Constitutional Oh, Convention. is that right? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Another piece. Yeah. It's all prepared you. <laughs> right, it has. Um, absolutely. And UH Law School is so much of this community, and it's so important for the students here to become, uh, participa participate in a, every level of community activity, whether it's environmental issues, uh, criminal justice issues, and uh, UH prides itself on having a wonderfully integrated student body. Uh, and, and actually, most law schools understand the importance of that nowadays. And, and preparing every law, law student to become a Wall Street lawyer, that's not where it's happening, not at all. We need lawyers to help day to day, whether it's community work, um, environmental, and uh, day to day governing issues. Yeah, and the courses. Mm -hmm. the, 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 yes. the courses, the courses many, many more that. courses, right. and they mm -hmm. reflect these changes. Right. Uh, your alma mater, Columbia, I, I met uh -huh. a guy from Columbia mm -hmm. a year or two ago mm -hmm. at an ALI, American mm -hmm. Law Institute meeting, mm -hmm. and um, his the course that he was famous for at Columbia Law School was, ready, torture. 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 It was a, <laughs> torture was a, was a law school course. <laughs> Because there was a growing body of law yes, about yes, torture, and, yes. and it was interesting, and it was a, you know, a lot of social policy in that. Right. Yes, absolutely. And so it just reflects how the old thing about torts and contracts and mm -hmm. civil, all those boring courses, they're really, right. um, they're not what law, uh, law students go to law school for. It's right. the other thing. Right, right. <laughs> and the other thing that um, has been a big issue has been the cost of education. So 
I sit on the Board of Governors, as we mentioned, at UC Hastings, which is a state of California law school. When I attended in the 70s, it cost me about $300 a year. And now tuition for residents is almost $50,000. Wow, for residents? Yeah, for residents. Wow. Lots of scholarships available, lots of work study, but it still is a huge bite. And uh, as a result of that, it's, of course, affected enrollment and, and other Access. issues. Access. Access, yeah. The dean, uh, Dave, uh, Frank Wu, who has been very much a forefront in innovation, um, law, sc uh, law school uh, innovation, has done things like reduce the enrollment so that um, it wouldn't um, affect the need to have more costs in terms of whatever faculty and so other the, the sweet spot. There. Yeah, exactly. Um, and UH Law School. Is, has prides itself on having very much a uh, uh, access to education. The cost is, is reasonable, so the residents pay less than um, I'm going to say less than twenty thousand. I'm sure it's less than twenty thousand dollars for re residents, and uh, of course have opportunities to work here downtown. In terms of being in a capital in the capital of um, the state, we have lots of work opportunities, clerking opportunities. Um, Business opportunities business in general. Opportunities. You know, the more lawyers, the right. easier it is to do business. Right. And, and, and UH Law School has a wonderful part-time program that enables students who have full-time jobs to continue their jobs and still earn a law degree. Yeah. And at the same time, mm -hmm. and we're running out of time, but this is my mm -hmm. final area I'd like to inquire mm -hmm. with you about, is at the same time that we've seen UH Law School become focused on issues mm -hmm that relate to Hawaii, that are special mm -hmm. for Hawaii, mm -hmm. as, as the case in many schools mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've also seen a kind of global view, mm -hmm. uh, where there's an LLM program, yes. and people come from, gee, everywhere mm -hmm. uh, to be here, mm -hmm. and we show them what Hawaii law is about, we educate them about right. Hawaii and its, its community and its business and all that. Yeah. Very valuable for everybody involved. Huge, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a few years ago, this wasn't happening. I think it happened started on your watch, didn't it? Well, at the very end, yes, we started an LLM program, and then this year there's another a new, another international program that started, and it has enriched the school, school and actually this community tremendously to bring in all these um, lawyers from other countries to come here to study to enable them to get an American degree and eventually to take the bar if they want to or if they yeah. decide to stay here. It's all about reaching out. All about reaching out. If right. Hawaii is going to be relevant and uh -huh. succeed in the 21st century, it has to be has to understand the world, it has to reach out to the world, it has to bring the world into it. It's not just a matter of tourism; it's a matter of intellectual connection right. everywhere, and we see that. Yeah. And we do some shows here. Think mm -hmm. back about that. Right. We are so happy to have you here. Think thank back. you, and th Minky thanks you too. Okay, a shot of Minky. Minky. Minky smile. Minky. My Minky. name is Minky. And I'm the team mascot for Think Tank. Minky Monley. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Jay. Wonderful to have you. <laughs>